time for our prayer. And uh, today's prayer comes from the heart of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and is only minimal, minimally modified. The day is done and the darkness falls from the wings of night as a feather is wafted downward from the eagle in his flight. I see the lights of the village gleam through the rain and the mist, and a feeling of sadness comes over me that my soul cannot resist. A feeling of sadness and longing that is not akin to pain, and resembles sorrow only, as the mist resembles the rain. Come, read to me some poem some simple and heartfelt lay that shall soothe this restful, restless feeling and banish the thoughts of day. Not from the grand old masters, not from the bards sublime, whose distant footsteps echo through the corridors of time. For like the strings of martial music, their mighty thoughts suggest life's endless toil and endeavor, and tonight, I long for rest. Read from some humbler poet whose songs gush from his heart and showers from the clouds of summer or tears from the eyelids start. Who through long days of labor and nights devoid of ease still heard in his soul the music of wonderful melodies. Such songs have power to quiet the restless pulse of care and come like the benediction that follows after prayer. Then read from the treasured volume the poem of thy choice and read, excuse me, lend to the rhyme of the poet the beauty of thy voice. And the night shall be filled with music and the cares that infest the day shall fold their tents like the nomads and silently steal away. I just want to compliment you on how pretty you sound. Thank you. Reading today is a, a series of quotes about music. Bertolt Auerbach says, Music washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Bono says music can change the world because it can change people. Cervantes, he who sings scares away his woes. Confucius, music produces a kind of pleasure which human nature cannot do without. Aldo Huxley. After silence, that which comes nearest to expressing the inexpressible is music. Friedrich Nietzsche. In music, the passions enjoy themselves. Jean-Paul Richter. Music is moonlight in the gloomy night of life. And Plato. <clears throat> Music is a moral law. It gives soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and charm and gaiety to life and to everything. William Shakespeare. If music be the food of love, play on. And lastly, Lily Tomlin. I worry that the person who thought up Muzak might be thinking of something else. <laughs> <laughs> that the 
news from local and cable stations brought into the assumed safety of our living room. Yet another day of atrocities and inhumanities levied upon innocent people. People who are loved dearly and thoroughly depended upon by the children who have walked with them hundreds of miles through countries in inflated hope of reaching a country whose constitution promises a welcome and a place to safely restart their lives. On any of those days I just related to, I could be heard talking to the screen of our TV loudly. Why are you so foolish? Where's your common sense? Do you not care about real people at all? Do your job. Except for the unfortunate family members in the room, nobody hears. Nobody listens. What I have succeeded in doing is to put myself on a fast track from frustration to anxiety to <coughs> anger with no remedy close to it at hand. And now, it's time for bed. On one particular night, there is a gift of grace on two levels. What happened next and with whom it happened. After a rant, I looked at my five-year-old granddaughter who smiled at me and climbed up into the recliner with me as I sat back down. We just kept smiling until we touched foreheads. And she sang lightly in my ear, grab your coat and get your hat. She knows the whole thing. That was a gift of grace. And she is grace. A singer and a dancer, a princess and a mermaid, a child with an uncanny ability to evade the frustration of an unimaginable, unimaginable situation and carry on, seemingly unscathed. She decided we should go into the back bedroom and do one of our concerts. This is where we sing some songs we both know and some we just make up on the spot. And usually it includes cracking each other up. So, sometime later, I sit and reflect. How can she do that? She's still got the magic. She's five years old. I've got 70 wise, sage, experiential years on her, and I can't do it. Or I don't. She's a kid. She's a kid. I was a kid. And then my magic moment happened. I instantaneously morphed to my childhood bedroom, playing my plastic ukulele, singing one of my favorite songs. I'm just a kid again, do what I did again, singing a song when the red, red valley comes ba, 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 and along. I loved that song. I sang it every day. I happily carried it as an earworm for weeks on end. Why? Because it made me happy. It was a pleasure to sing those repetitive words, almost as nonsense syllables. Bob, Bob, Bobbin, Red, Red, Robin. It was a joy to hear the rhymes inside the sentences as well is on the ends. Rain may glisten, but still I listen for hours and hours. And it was a confidence toward getting better. Wake up, sleepyhead. Get up, get out of bed. Cheer up, the sun is red. It was a pleasure, a joy, and a confidence. The happiness I felt was a freedom. And who doesn't love freedom? Wouldn't it be wonderful to feel just a little touch of that freedom every day? Interesting. 
to lead. Reverend Terry Sweetser shares with us that the word freedom comes from an ancient Norse root verb that means to become loving. Freedom is not properly a state of being then, he says, but more accurately, a choice for becoming. A choice for becoming. So it's not all sewed up then that we're either a happy creature or not, but we have the capability of choices toward a happier, freer outcome. What if I've been blue? Now I'm walking through fields of flowers. Admittedly, I received no pleasure, no joy, no confidence by blowing brain cells at our TV. But I absolutely did by singing with my granddaughter. I gained no satisfaction by contesting a contentious speaker's views but I do by being part of a freedom song circle, or a phone bank, or attending a racial justice presentation, or a Saturday vigil when I can with you. In the setting of our religion, or faith movement, where we believe in the worth and dignity of every human being, where from our UU primer, Every earthly person has an equal claim to life, liberty, and justice, and no idea, ideal, or philosophy is superior to a single human life. I do feel pleasure, joy, and confidence. Here, where the governing principle in human relationships is the principle of love, always seeking the welfare of others, never seeking to hurt or destroy, I do feel pleasure, joy, and confidence. It comes with my Sagittarian nature. A truth seeker, social justice and facts matter. A harmonious balance in everyone's needs being met as is feasible is important. I feel the freedom of my personal search for truth and meaning. I feel freedom. I'm becoming love. Love is the spirit of this meeting house. I wonder if Tin Pan Alley composer and lyricist Harry McGregor Woods, who wrote Red Red Robin, way back in 1926, knew what love, what freedom, what happiness he was creating with those few stanzas beyond for himself. He doubtless learned so quite early on. It stole the show in the Jolson story, produced that same year, 26. It went on to become a single hit for Jolson, Lillian Roth, Sophie Tucker, Bing Crosby, Doris Day, and countless others through the decades. And today, a cappella group Panache and Australian keyboardist Greedy Smith have contemporary his hits with the tune. Harry Woods wrote the song as a novelty song. It is as many other novelty songs and nonsense song, it as many other nonsense songs and novelty songs have found great life and purpose during and after World War II, when resources were bleak and entertainment was most affordable from the radio. Think Mersey Dotes and Dozy Dotes. Would you like to swing on a star or would you rather be a pig? Bob Crosby's orchestra recorded Red Red Robin in 1939, the beginning of World War II, and Jolson re-recorded it in 1947, a year and a half after the war ended. It was fun to sing, alone 
and certainly in any group, like around a kitchen table. It worked for other Americans and Europeans, no doubt. Anybody who had a radio. Bringing moments of joyous freedom, just as it did for me. We come here looking for those moments of joyous freedom, of what Reverend Patrick O'Neill calls communal abundance. And as I'm standing here looking at all of you, I can't help but wonder what song, what book, what movie, what road trip helped you to become love, to feel the pleasure, the joy, and the confidence of your free self. And I'd like to leave you with an invitation, a mission, should you choose to accept it. <coughs> this is to think just about that. Just think about the root of your joyous freedom. And then to revisit that joy, write a quick <coughs> description or poem of it. Could be four lines or four pages if you get on a roll. I'll collect them, and we can share them in a Becoming Love book. Um, I'll put my email and snail mail addresses downstairs on the round table, and, and I'll put it also on the UUMH book list, so you can send them to me. Deadline, May Day, May 1st. It's a date we'll remember. It's a date, right? And for those of you so inclined, these may be read at the Talent No Talent show on Mother's Day weekend. May it be so. Amen. And let's be. Oh, uh -huh.